Kentucky. Andy and I on the road. Byron's gonna miss down there. Uh, should be a good time. We got all the shit packed up. Got all kinds of shit in here. I don't know if you can see it. Got a bike back there. You never know what's gonna happen. Should be a good trip. Just got here. First thing you gotta do is grab a beer, open it up, and take a swiggins. Ah, now time's up, camp. All right, what we got going on here, A-Rod? We got some good structural support right here. <laughs> That'll work. That'll work. <laughs> that may or may not catch on fire. We don't know yet. No, we're good. We're good. We're good shape. Are those boots flame retardant? <laughs> yeah, these are off the Santa Claus. There's like uh, five something. And I don't know where Andy and Dave are. They texted me at 4.30. They retired. I'm here at the trail. Um, about to head in. It's raining today, so we'll have limited footage of today's events. I'm gonna bring the camera though, just in case. Um, but uh, audio might be a little weak uh, for our production. But uh, you know, it's it's rainy conditions. This is hunting, so and then when you gotta pack in and go deep. Whitetail experience tip of the day. It's raining and it's muzzleloader season. You can get these guys right here. They look silly as hell. It's a uh, like a caulk tube saver. You can get them at your hardware stores. Just took my first out of state deer, big old doe, and I am pumped. Hell yes. So, well, yeah, I, I heard some shit crunching coming down this hill. I was way down there across the on the other side. They came from this side? Yep. I seen a person crunching and two deer came down. This one and another one. They came down. She was in front. They're like mingling around just a little bit going across the creek to me. And uh, I hear some stuff going crazy up there and I look up but I didn't see a rack but it was a little buck chasing a doe or something. Jeez. Something sizable because yeah. I couldn't tell. I, I, I had a scope. Yeah. You had a rack? No, I, I couldn't see one through oh, the scope. You couldn't see one, okay. Yeah, but he was bumping around, but then some squirrels were going crazy by this doe, so I was, she was kind of getting uh, on edge, so I just let her rip. It was pretty clutch to get a doe on the ground from the team. Pretty good morale boost, and it was nice because in Ohio, we cannot shoot does after the first gun season. And with this being Andy's first opportunity, we were able to fill his freezer. After a quick talking with the officer, he merely let me go with a warning, and it was back to business. So I had two does across the hill, and nothing since but the squirrel. 
Barbara is on. I'm going to sit tight. About an hour. And then I'm going to go for a walk about. All right, at this point, <clears throat> you can see I, I went on a couple more hunts after the guys, uh, you know, after the weekend push, if you will. And, you know, I wanted to put some summarizing type tactical thoughts uh, around this oh, Kentucky Public Land Series at this point. You know, during muzzleloader season, something that's kind of nice and we've always done even here in Ohio is after that morning hunt, uh, we do tend to do either some small pushes, uh, deer drives, wind bumps. Uh, but you're also scouting while you're doing this. You know, you can still hunt uh, because you have the advantage of a firearm. And with this ground being new, it was nice to to do some still hunting and some some pu pushing. And, and, and while we're doing that, we're pulling up the onyx. We're marking, oh, interesting finds, uh, deer sign, hunter sign. You know, with that last clip you saw in this video, you see we encountered some hunter pressure. Uh, and I think that's kind of been a, a, a COVID-style, oh thing that's going on in the woods these days. I feel like this year more than ever, we've seen more hunters in the woods uh, starting in turkey season even. And that that trend continued all the way into fall. Even, you know, people hunting other areas, different pieces of public. We saw an increase in pressure and we noted that here in, in the Kentucky series as well. And, and guys are just out, you know. Uh, there's not a lot of other things to do. Even the, the small game pressure probably is up, you know, from, from what it used to be. So, you know, overall, we, we got some major scouting in it. In fact, I obviously went down two other times and was able to do some moving after that first hour. One of the days, it was wetter, snowy-ish conditions, so so I had really good oh, conditions to still hunt, and I saw some deer doing that. But overall, we've got at least now a solid blueprint. <clears throat> and that's, you know, uh, something we do here uh, in Ohio, but like now that we have a blueprint, you know, we have some areas that maybe hold more deer than others and kind of understand the landscape a little more. We can now hopefully either if we want to do a return trip, if we tag out next year early in Ohio, we can go to this piece or whatever. Um, and, and essentially have a starting point to, to figure out, okay, this area was hot you know, this point leads into this doe bedding area. So we've got the, the, the building blocks starting. Obviously, we're nowhere near some of the ground that we spend time on here in our home state. But, you know, it's it's a good, we have a good building block because I've done so many journeys. The fact Andy and Dave were also down there kind of hunting other areas and comparing notes. And, and so this has been fun. I, I, I will say uh, I don't like being so transparent with what we're doing. Uh, it seems that, 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 you know, that seems to attract some eyeballs, but you know, it's been a fun series to bring you guys. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm going to get down for any more late season hunting. Uh, the wife has kind of, uh, told me, you know, with the newborn, we, she needs me home. So we'll see Ohio, uh, Andy and Dave still have buck tags here. So they're going to be doing some scouting and hunting, trying to fill that final tag. And, and so we may get back to Kentucky, we may not. Um, I may try and get my sister out here for muzzleloader in two weeks and try and lay a deer down, um, even on the family farm, so so we can shoot does there still. So I uh, look forward to bringing you guys some more content. I got some great ideas in the pipe. I need to get Dave in, together and we can do a podcast talking a little bit maybe more about some of the camping and hunting things that we've learned or or stuff like that. I had a really great phone call with Jason Samkovia, kind of comparing notes because we've done a few of these and he's somebody that does a lot of them. So we've got some areas uh, that, that, that I think would be cool for guys looking to do trips like this. And uh, that'd be a good podcast for Dave and I to, to BS about. And he can tell his side of the story, um, some of his Kentucky adventures, because, um, you know, it was a great trip. Uh, so so be cool to... to, to you know, share with you guys. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, if you like this kind of public land content, we got many more films on the channel. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching. Leaving for Kentucky tomorrow. Figured I might want to shoot the gun I'm using at least one time. Did you bring your own targets at least? I brought the little stickers to oh. stick on your targets. There we go. <laughs>